I'm going to tell you what you need to do to stop being an average photographer and up your game and be a great photographer. Now it was easy in the past. Becoming a great photographer then, well that just meant knowing about exposure, focus, push, pull processing. Because yes, to be a good photographer back then usually meant you had to be good at film processing too. But today it's all different. The camera focuses for you. It works out the exposure for you. They even track moving subjects. They can distinguish between landscapes, people, and even animals. So what's left for the photographer to do? To earn the right to be a great photographer. Because when you go out to an inspirational location, like, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower, the Manhattan skyline, Denmark's Little Mermaid statue, you'll be standing next to hordes of other photographers and they're all going to have the same autofocus cameras as you. Autofocus, auto exposure, they're all going to be able to capture the very same image as you. So what is going to make you different to them? How are you going to stop being the average Joe? Well, I'll tell you, it's not the latest kit and it's not a mathematical composition rule and it's not enrolling on another online photography course teaching you everything you need to know in five minutes. Neither is it buying the latest plugin that manufactures a photo look for you. Now, if you really, really want to become a great photographer, then there's just one thing that you need to identify, and that is your vision. Now, let me explain. But just before I do, I need to tell you that I've worked out the answer to eternal youth. It's a simple one, and if eternal youth is something that you like, then you just have to bash the button below and subscribe. Youthful looks will be yours forever. <laughs> they believe that, they believe anything. Now, there are millions of photographs uploaded every day. In fact, according to Forbes, an amazing 300 million images were uploaded to the web every day. I say were because that report was way back in 2018. Now in 2022, reports suggest the figure's way higher. How much higher? Well, hold on to your hat because current estimates of photos taken around the globe every day are 54,000 every second. That's 3.3 million a minute, 196 million an hour, 4.7 billion a day, 32 billion a week, 143 billion per month, and wait for it, 1.72 trillion photos taken every year. That's a lot of data. So how is your image gonna stand out amongst that lot? Vision. That's how. You see, great photographers have great vision. Their skills are an observation. They seem to have the ability to see an image that others simply don't. They just walk past it. They can stand in the same location as other photographers and spot something that everyone else is missing. While the average Joe is looking at the whole scene in front of them, while the great photographer is noticing something small within that scene and they're composing with their eyes and honing in on it. Whether it's people, whether it's landscapes, architecture, lighting, they're waiting for that perfect image, which might only be a fraction of a second, might only be a fraction of their view, but they're looking for it, all the time looking for it. So to become a great photographer, my tip would be to start training yourself to see the whole picture. Don't just accept what's in front of you. Challenge it, look into it, Look around it. I use a couple of my images now to kind of show you what I mean. I was shooting a job in Copenhagen last year and during some downtime, I thought I'd have a stroll down to see the famous Little Mermaid statue uh, in the harbour. I stood with the throngs of tourists taking their photos. Well, the interesting part of this scene wasn't actually the statue, but the way the tourists were interacting with the statue. Sometimes they were more focused on their selfies than on the statue itself. I wondered whether some people had even noticed it. So I recomposed and I shot and I made the tourist, the photographer's part of the picture. Moving around a museum, I wandered into a room full of statues from great sculptors, but it was the security guard that took my eye and made the picture. Next time in Falmouth in Cornwall, it's a pretty harbour scene, a lovely day, everybody taking photos in the sunshine of the blue sky and the boats bobbing about in the harbour. But you have to work a little harder for that special picture. Nobody else was seeing it, but there were some council workers all sitting in their orange jackets, sitting on a bench, looking at the harbour. A hundred people walked past them that day, not many 
saw the people on the bench. And that, for me, was the picture. On a chairlift in the Austrian Alps, beautiful scenery everywhere. Everybody taking panoramic shots of the mountains. But look, look at the detail. My eye suddenly is drawn to one slope because there's heavy backlighting from a morning sun. And the shadows created by powder in the turns was fascinating. I switched to full zoom, reframed, and bang. Everybody else saw it, but not everybody else noticed it. You see what I mean? So if, like me, you strive every day to become a better photographer, well, standing in front of things is not enough. Just getting there, it's not enough. You've got to learn to look, and you've got to stop relying on technology and create a great picture in here, in your head, with your eyes. It's not difficult, but it will take a whole new mindset. You're going to have to retrain your vision. If you want to see what I mean, I was out for a lovely walk recently and during the walk I just noticed something that would make a great photo and so I couldn't resist. I honed in on it and got just the picture I was after. And if you want to see me shoot that picture, then click on this link here.